then I, I transfer that information onto a different worksheet that I then use for myself during the day and it has different levels. Since I started posting this to Twitter, which you have to understand, I do this for me because it makes me accountable to myself to get it up there by a certain time. And I have a new assistant, Kyle, who just started with me a couple months ago. And so he's the one that's posting it. And the truth of the matter is I'm teaching Kyle to trade. So through these steps of teaching Kyle to trade and having him go through all these processes, the whole idea is that perhaps it'll be of value to other people. Not that I'm trying to teach you guys my strategy here in one session, um, but at least you'll know what I'm looking at and what I do for myself uh, because I seem to get emails every day and even when we've posted the key to the trade sheet um, hold on here hey Damon I really there we go even when I post the key to the trade sheet a lot of people don't know what it means so I'm just simply gonna take no more than half an hour because the markets are busy today yes so, so far, it's only shown this, not the whole Oh, screen. boy. Okay. No, because this is... Well, get me out of there. <laughs> okay, hang on. Job opening for professional tech support <laughs> to run videos a trader, for no. an aged tech old guy. lady here. Can you, uh, let's see. Okay, screen four, there you go. So you should be seeing my screen. Okay, yes. Type in a room, can you see her screen or are you just seeing her picture? Okay. Real quickly, for me, the most important points of the day are the day's high and low. And I like to have these on a sheet in front of my face at all times. And um, I even have a CQG page that will print this up. The colors are not not correct right here, but it has the previous day's high, the previous day's low, and and these things. So this actually should have a white background. I just flew up from Florida last night and got in late into Chicago because American Airlines canceled my flight for a second time in a row. So if I'm a little bit behind, give me understanding there. So I take this initial sheet, I take the signals from it, I transfer them onto that other sheet that you just saw with my instructions if I'm going to buy or sell or exit a position. So it's a whole process. I always start off with the high and low of the day. These are 24 hour pit sessions. Now with TradeStation, I'll tell you a little secret. They don't always use the close of the close of the bar as we know it. Um, so if you want to get around that and you have trade station, put in 100, 1440 for the minutes, and then you will get the full range of data instead of having them close the bonds early, but yet really the bonds closed at a different price. So that's what I try to do here. High and low for the day. The pattern this was something that we did a lot of research on 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when there were all this NR7 IDs. It is not as significant as it used to be. The only things I look for on the patterns are really WR7, wide range seven. And the reason is because then we can start to get um, better rotation the next day as the market consolidates. 
you see that we have NR7s here, and this was one of the things that Toby Craybell had detailed in his book. However, it's not so significant as you might think. Breakouts from NR7s can be very choppy and very noisy. So I do not use that in my trading in the way that I did 20 years ago. But this sheet is programmed that pops up NR7s and WR7s and so forth. This next bar, BO, yeah, I know. If you got up late in the morning and didn't get a chance to uh, take proper care of yourself, there's the BO for you. But it simply means that there is a three bar triangle breakout. And for example, what does that look like? Gold here, I know I covered up my sheet. But here you can see the high and the low, and we had a bar inside those previous two bar high and low. So that's what I call the three bar triangle breakup, and that sheet will always flag that for you in that breakout column. It is one of the better trading patterns. Here is another one on silver. You can see right here, how this bar was inside the previous two bars. Three bar triangle breakout, boom, then you get range expansion. Although in this particular case, silver was not so much significant range expansion. What is happening when we get these three bar breakouts? Let me show you. If any of you are familiar with the volume nodes, that can form when you get your volume distribution. I'll go back to that uh, gold and silver example because they were pretty choice. Uh, so what happens when you have one of those three bar breakout patterns? See how this node had formed here the previous day up here before we broke out? That represents that you have formed an equilibrium level volume node where everybody came into agreement. Of course, we had overnight news that exaggerated things a little bit. And it's just looking for the next day. What I do in my program two trading, see program one is my S&P trading, program two are just these in one day, out the next day types of things. Program three, which I am not going to go into here, are more daily, weekly chart formations. But with this program two, that's what I'm using this trade sheet for, and I'm gonna to continue to show you the patterns that I work. Here you can see we had this three bar triangle pattern in the Euro currency. So I am um, becoming more proficient with these little, this is CQG by the way, and you can do just about everything on uh, CQG that you can on TradeStation and vice versa. The biggest difference is that TradeStation has a really wonderful radar scan. So this three bar triangle popped up on the trade sheet as a one in that breakout column. Okay, this is today's, but it would have been yesterday's. It would show right, right there or maybe this was yesterday's, I think that was yesterday's, and then we got our range expansion out of that. What makes it so um, potentially trendy is this is the volume node, okay? You can use TPOs, you can use volume, it really doesn't matter. You can take your ruler and simply draw it through a number of bars. You don't need market profile, you don't need this volume node software, although more and more programs use that. So anytime we get one of these really fat nodes and you break out from that, you have greater odds of range expansion and a trend day. All I'm trying to do in my trading is capture the trend for the next day. That's my main job. Um, and if it's a good trend, you can hold it overnight. Um, or you can exit at the end of the day or anywhere along the day if you wish. There is a volatility breakout system 
on this sheet right here. Long breakout, short breakout. The whole details of the system are something that I could teach in another setting. And I do enjoy teaching this stuff because it was so um, invaluable to me. I originally adopted my ideas from Bob Duran, and I actually detailed that out in the Trading Sardines book and gave him credit for this. I have my own modifications on it, and what you will find when you play with volatility breakout systems is that they're very durable and robust, which means that you don't have necessarily one set of parameters that's optimal. So if I were to, um, if I were to optimize the settings for a volatility breakout system across 20 markets, what I would find is that one quarterly period, one set of parameters was optimal. The next quarterly period, a different set would be optimal. So these are the types of strategies or systems that you really want that will stay robust and aren't curve fitted towards just one set of parameters. So with the volatility breakout system, the original exit on this system was if it pulls you in and there's a range expa uh, expansion function, you can take um, Bob's original system was taking the previous day's range, adding it to the close or subtracting it to the close. And then that would be the level that the system pulls you in at. So these are the levels. At the very least, they serve as excellent stop levels. So if you are carrying a position, these are excellent stop levels just as a default, if you're caught with your pants down and on the fly, that's a good thing to do it. Um, and then the original system said, exit the next day's close, <clears throat> excuse me, exit the next day on a test below this previous day's low. So what that does is it keeps you staying with that short side and you can see we actually traded below that low uh, last night or early a.m. this morning. When we model these things, just as an aside, you'll find we also model them exit on the close or exit on the next bars open. <clears throat> Many ways to skin a cat. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the main idea is that you try to stay with the trade for as long as you can. And if you have an exit that says, exit on the next day's open or exit on a test below the previous day is low, psychologically that keeps you from exiting your big winning trend day trades too early. So that's just an aside. I'm not gonna um, <clears throat> go into the volatility breakout stuff more. If people are interested, I'm doing a two week um, intensive uh, actual trading, real-time stuff um, starting next Monday. And if people do have a desire to uh, really learn these things, you can, you can join and you can email me because I've got my friend Mandy coming over here from Australia and Kyle and Peter over in Serbia. And we just said, well, we're going to bring cots and sleep in the office, OD on coffee, and we are here at your beck and call to spend as much time discussing any of these different strategies as you like after the markets are closed or at lunch because as you know during the trading day is when all the opportunity unfolds especially in the morning so if I can do my trade sheet and preparation on the close of the day and if you're caught flat-footed you can do it in the last hour of the day it's done and you have it because for me, like I said, I was flying uh, from Florida to, to Chicago. My, my American Airlines flight got canceled. I had to scramble, get another flight. I got in like super late last night. I'm coming in totally behind the gun. But guess what? My trade sheet is done. My homework is done. And at least I have something to go by. So uh, don't wait for the next morning to try and scramble and do your homework. Okay, moving on. This is the breakout, the three bar triangle breakout. P, that stands for pinball. A pinball buy or sell is going to look 
like a 120 minute bull flag or a 120 minute bear flag. So you can see here on the Canadian dollar, we had a P for a pinball buy. These are very strong trades. Pinball was originally detailed out in the Street Smarts book. We did some more modifications and found that if you only take the pinball buys that are above a 20 period moving average, it'll double your results and eliminate a lot of losers. So for example, with this Canadian dollar, the basic play is that you're looking for a low to high date. I keep it so simple. Am I doing a high to low day or a low to high day? And then of course there might be little short term scalps that you can do around that. So not only was this the pinball buy, which you will see here, I, I love looking at these 120 and these 240 minute charts. And I do not always keep these volume distributions up there. I actually just threw them up there for you guys to see today so you could get the feeling of that three bar. Normally I do not uh, trade with these things on my charts. I'm pretty straightforward bars and momentums and what is the main idea right? Can I get the main idea right? And um, this little red, green, red code, Kyle and I have a funny joke that we always say in an uptrend, meaning higher highs and higher lows, Red zone is for loading only, just our takeoff from airplanes. So this red zone area here is for loading only. And you're looking for a play back up for it to turn green and then you can trail the stop. So here's another little trick. I know I'm talking about uh, more than I, uh, I intended to do, but I'm just going to throw a parabolic up there on, on these charts for you. And, uh, Ay, ay, ay. Let's get rid of this. Make this a 240 here. So the idea is <clears throat> in the red zone loading only, <clears throat> you're going to be long and you're going to look for a push back up till it turns green. This is a parabolic just for a hypothetical visual for you but you get the idea. Um, once you have a trade management function that is by the pullback, and then when it gets to the certain threshold level where it would flip the swing positive again, and you can use whatever you want. You can use, is the stochastic back above 50%? Is an oscillator back up above zero? Is it pushing up by a certain amount of ATR function. There's so many ways to skin a cat here. But I just wanted you to get the feeling of this is what the ideal pinball buy should really be looking like. And we also had one on the Australian dollar, which you can see. We had a high to low day, and now we've got our low to high day red zone loading only, what is the trend for the day, low to high, will we continue higher? Probably we will. Um, we should close, the model says that we should close back above that five SMA. Now there's always, this is my, my trade sheet that I'm, I'm showing you. I'm not teaching you how to trade here, but as an aside, a lot of times we come in the next morning and it may well be that much of the trade happened overnight. And this is where if you're a student of the Taylor technique and you want to read what he really says, he says, perhaps it could have been a buy day, but where the highs were made first because you gapped up so much and then you have to wait for a pullback to buy. So, I don't want to confuse you on that. Um, we also had a lovely pinball buy in gold. So there's the trade sheet here. And you can see both gold and silver had pinball buys. The best pinball buys will look like a pullback of sorts on this 120 or 240 minute type of time frame. And it's just an easy way of, of, for me to scan for things in a very quick manner and do my homework. 
Moving on, TP. Okay, this is a funny little column that I get a lot of inquiries about. And TP, I got really frustrated with the fact that sometimes I could have a three bar triangle, but the software wouldn't pick up the pattern if it just ticked a little bit high or a little bit low. Uh, so it wasn't a perfect three bar triangle. So I came up with a way to write um, code. In fact, the EC had a really good, super insane low reading on this. Um, and I think it was right here that it started doing it. And that low was just a tick below that previous low. So it wasn't picking it up on the three bar triangle. But this super low TP reading, just think of it as having three bars of price overlap. And you really do not need to complicate it more than that. I am not giving out this code because I don't want to, but you can see the crude oil had a super low TP reading coming in this morning. Anything below 45 is considered low, it's perverse. So you see this was a low reading saying potential for range expansion, but it failed to, to make the three bar triangle breakout. So if you ever glance at this sheet and, and, and you don't see the three bar, but you see the low, low TP reading, it's, almost the exact same thing. This column here, three and three, uh, with, uh, which is the previous day's three, these two threes, and here you see a minus one and a minus one. Same thing with corn, a minus one and a minus one. I call those my PF3s. I will explain to you exactly what they mean to me I tried to teach it once at a seminar 20 years ago and had a lot of glazed over eyes uh, and blank stares. So I don't teach it anymore, but I will show you exactly what it is and you can produce it yourself. Um, hard to do much statistical testing with it. It's more like reading tea leaves and all it is PF3 is positive slope on three different things. So on here, I have um, my 310 oscillator and a two period rate of change all overlaid on top of each other. I'll make that a little bit, I'll make it even a little bit darker. I hope that you are finding this interesting and it's not too all over the place. So this line here and this slow line are simply the 310 oscillator. This is welcome to my little game. I'm just going to put up the regular oscillator underneath it because honestly, if I had to only trade with two things and a gun to my head, this is exactly what I would use. Um, it's my little chessboard. Take this down. So you can see this is the, uh, the 310 oscillator. Now, PF3 simply means that all the slopes of the three lines were in the same direction. I mean, it's not exactly rocket science. So I put the dots where they were PF3 up and the dots where they were PF3 down. It's pretty rare that you get more than two consecutive PF3s in a row. So that's all that that column means is that we might have had some range expansion. We might have had a little bit of a mini climax. Let's just see what the EC looks like because that was one coming in this morning. Oh, you know what? Trade Station didn't count it because Trade Station, this should have been a PF3 down here, but uh, the Trade Station code I think was. Um, doing the day session or the pit session at that time. 
but on on uh, on my trade sheet you'll see it was down one down two and so it it kind of gave it all that it had to the upside or the downside i know it's not going to make a whole lot of sense in implicitly but a lot of times after i get this one two down i look for the buy day one two down i look for the buy day one two up i look for the short day one two up i look for the short day it doesn't test out because it can get run over it's tricky so you see one two up so if you see i've got two pf3s up the next day i've got a sell short day i in my program two am only trading one day at a time how am I going to trade that particular day? Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I looking for a breakout? So that is all that this trade sheet here tells me. Really simple. It's not telling me anything about breakouts from weekly formations or structure on uh, daily oscillators or any of these other types of things. So the next column on here is the, uh, let's get this right here. <laughs> the next column on there is the five SMA. And I already showed you, and I know many of you are familiar with it right here. Bingo, 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 five SMA. So, the CD and the Australian had had an extended run, meaning I had more than seven days or seven days on one close above the five SMA. So there we go. The first close below is a buy. So that's all that that column does. Now there's a caveat to this particular pattern. And again, I can't teach everything today, but you want to be extremely careful about retracement trades after two conditions. Number one, a V spike, okay? Meaning like a wide range reversal is a radical shift of momentum. Or if you have a little three bar consolidation at the bottom of the swing because now you have formed a balance area. So just be careful of that, that um, perhaps this wasn't quite an extended run up, but let's say this had been an extended run. You would want to be careful about saying, oh, this is a strong buy day because you had this little three bar balance there. So it's just a little caveat, but um, these are things that you can examine for yourself. Anything you ever hear me talk about, you take notes and then you go look and you see the times that it works and the times that it does not work. Now we added on another column here on this trade sheet and I had taken it off for a while because I did not want people to get into trouble and it says divergence here. So heating oil, minus D, cell divergence. Hmm, what does that look like? Let's see what that looks like. I better make it a daily chart. Okay, so when that popped up, you see my little white bars here. I call those magics. And, and a lot of times they will highlight divergences. So for example, uh, we had them on the Russell at the top here. Let me see here. I know we had little, little magics there, little, and you'll see the divergence in the oscillator. Okay. Um, so if, if, if you see those, they're little, little magics kind of alert to the divergences in the oscillator. Now there's two caveats to this. They'll also give false signals when you're just breaking down from a triangle, okay? It's not based on any code from this 310 oscillator. It's based on some very complicated code that took me about 50 hours to write, but this is just one of the glitches. 
That's why I don't publish it because I think that people would end up losing a lot more money with it and not recognizing that all it serves to do is to draw your eye to see if there is a cell divergence there. See, that's all it does. It's saying like, hey, let me just check this out. Is there a divergence there? So if you see that, you might just want to take a little sneaky peek and, and see if that indeed is up there on the sheet. This column here, signal and short-term pivot, okay? I did this by hand all through the late 80s and the early 90s, and then when I had my research partnership with Steve Moore, we back-tested this a million different ways, upside and down, and all it means is, I'm gonna get rid of this guy here, if, for example, you see a S with two with a parentheses around it. It just means that that signal is more than one day old. All right. Here it would be a single B, and here it would be a single S. What I was looking for was anticipating these flips because when we originally modeled this I asked the computer what would happen I'll put up the S and P so everybody can relate to them what would happen if we bought on the first close so this here is the first close up and I asked what would happen if we bought on that first close. Let me just make this so it's pretty for you. So this was the first close up. Let's say I went long there. What would happen if I exited a day later? So I knew that if I had S the first day down, then S in parentheses, S in parentheses, S in parentheses, that this might be ripe to flip. My whole game became, why do I want to wait for that first close up? Why do I want to wait for this to go from an S with parentheses to a B? I know there's a very small edge, not enough to make a living, mind you, but there's a very small edge if I bought on the fresh flip up and then exited. Okay, these are just simple models. They're not systems because you will, um, you'll see there's no stops used here. So then it became, what happens if I put in the actual pivot or the actual level that would confirm that this would flip up. And we did a lot of modeling with that. And what we found was that the price can fluctuate back and forth through this short-term pivot all day long, and it'll drive you crazy. So honestly, I don't even look at this column anymore. All I am looking at was S with parentheses. This is the Euro currency. That means that it had been uh, down two days and was poised to flip up. Therefore, today for me in the euro currency was a buy day. I am going to initiate from the long side. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to hold it as a position, but I just want to try to get the main idea right. So that is how I use that particular column. Um, I'm not sure if there's, well, the corn, you know, now keep in mind, these were just one to two day trades. I actually bought corn this morning. I bought it on a test of this low here. I probably will not hold this too long because it doesn't have a three bar balance yet. And we made new momentum lows on this rate of change. So if you ever see on my sheets and I'm putting scalp only that means i probably don't want to carry this home overnight unless it had an exceptional close making a v because the risk is 
that we have to do continuation. Just like right here, you can see we had two big days up, made new momentum highs. There was a great shorting day. I could short above the previous day, just like Taylor does, and capture something, but it wasn't something that I wanted to hold overnight because there was still risk of some retest or continuation up. And then you can see we had a little bit more of a divergence type of function, if that makes sense. So these, this is like, I grew up playing board games as a family. I mean, that was all the uh, cheap entertainment that my uh, mother could afford. And we had Parcheesi and Scrabble and Monopoly and Trouble and card games and every single uh, dominoes, every single game under the sun. So what I effectively did for myself was to create my own board game with my own rules. I like playing bridge, I like playing hearts, I like playing spades, I like playing any game. And you will notice with any game, you have certain edges where some things may or may not work out, but it doesn't mean that it'll always work out either. But you need to have your own game board with your own rules. And so that's how I think of this. This is my game board with my own rules and for me, at least, they have um, been durable and robust and, and held the test of time for uh, basically four decades. This two period rate of change, this was the actual reading. Um, I'll show you something else very cool if I can pull it up here. Um, <laughs> let me see. This isn't it, but um, it actually gives the values of the two peer rate of change. And this is what I used to uh, write down by hand. I'll call it up for you because I know it'll be instruction. But just suffice to say for now, when you see this column with these blue lines here, that means that it made new momentum lows on that two period change. And I use a 30 day look back. So, let me see if I can get this here for you. So this links into, uh, uses a DDE link and user DDL link and links into uh, the data from my CQG. And I used to write all of this down by hand and I just can't do that anymore because this for hand has arthritis. So you can see here the readings, the close, and the momentum functions. This right here is simply that two period rate of change. So if I were to type in corn here, well, I won't type in corn, I'll just type in S and P's here. You will see, um, whoop, 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 whoop. This was, this was uh, yesterday's reading there. So we had up 38 points, up 34 points. This is the two period rate of change. This is CQG. It's a little bit glitchy. And you can see down here when we had that minus 36 reading um, was down here. This is the shape of this. 
And then this also generates a PF3. This is totally separate from TradeStation, mind you. These are the pinball buys and sells, the 5SMA. So there's lots of different ways that you can formulate data. So when you look at my trade sheet, there's one last thing. Here's the two period rate of change, the actual reading that's the difference between today's close and the close two days ago. The reason why this has a little bit of an edge is that it has a better signal to noise ratio than a one period rate of change. And that means that it's a little bit less noisy when you are using it in uh, quantitative work or modeling. So a two period rate of change has a little bit better signal to noise ratio than a one period rate of change. I do not have my background in engineering. This was told to me by people who are a whole lot smarter than me. So I'm just gonna take their word for it. Lastly, 20 day highs and lows. Sometimes I put up the five day highs and lows. Sometimes I put up the 20 day highs and lows. And these are always really uh, significant chart points in the marketplace. So um, I, I try to have those in front of me uh, at, at the time. Now, a couple comments from people. I just wanted to introduce this to you. A couple comments. I'm getting feedback that yes, it takes one to two hours to go through all this. Of course it does because you're just starting out and you're just putting it together even if you do it for three, three years. I want you to understand I'm showing you my process. This might not work for everybody but you can take some ideas from it. When, when I first started trading the S&Ps, and, and they're like my main bread and butter market, I didn't do all of this. I didn't do coffee. I didn't do Eurex. I didn't do any of this. I take the S&Ps and I write down the previous day's high and low, the Globex high and low, maybe one or two other data points if there's gaps. Okay, but I did some initial preparation. That's the whole point. I want you to see, I'm not necessarily trying to teach you this game in one thing. That would be like me trying to teach somebody how to play bridge in, in half an hour. You, you can't do that. You learn to play bridge by playing many, many times with many different partners and, you know, and it, and it takes a while and then it becomes really, really fun. Bridge is a really fun game, but it takes a really long time. And it's like that with, with most of the best games, you know. Um, so, but there's a process and you start off small. Maybe just do it with the S&Ps and the bonds. Um, or another thing, I have a friend and all he does is look for the pinball buys or sells that may or may not occur on his particular markets. I have another friend and he loves to do the breakouts from the three bars and uh, he calls them cave fills when they go in and they totally fill the range. So let me just see if we've got a good cave fill underway here. Um, this would be this would have been like a little mini cave fill in the uh, in the crude oil coming down. So everybody takes these games and they make up their own variations on them. And I can't even do this whole sheet by myself and do that many markets. Um, I usually do the sheet, and then the next morning, I, I usually always try to trade the S and P's. Uh, but I might only be in groove with a few markets. I haven't traded, uh, you know, some of these markets for a while, but I, they might all of a sudden start to look interesting for me. So the process for me of going through and looking at each market one at a time doesn't mean I plan on trading each market, but it does mean that I am there 
when I do see a very ripe chart formation. And then I'm ready to capitalize on it. Because I guarantee you, I don't know of any trader that could trade 10 markets every single day and do it well. You just can't manage that all. So um, I always use the 24 hour session. A lot of times I do put on trades in the evening. Sometime it works out, sometime it doesn't. But if I see a compelling pattern, there are often good entries in the evening. Um, other times I have come to peace with the fact that sometimes the patterns on the trade sheet unfold overnight, but it doesn't matter because the duration should be for at least a 24 hour session. So if I were looking in, let's just go back to these S&Ps the other day, and we had a, a, a really good buy day. Um, I'm just going to put up this spy here. Okay. So this will just be a good enough proxy if I put up the spy that you can see what happens. This is the 24 hour session. Oh, we really wanted to buy right here. We had this three bar triangle breakout, right? But now we're coming into the New York session and it's gapping up. How do we manage that? Sometimes you do get a dip down that you can enter on. Other times we have to do the gap rules and say, okay, if it didn't trade below the first five minute bar, um, that's very strong power to the upside. I know that if we did not trade four points into this gap, that means that the afternoon has a positive expectation to the upside. So therefore you can just go ahead and uh, you know, perhaps find a short term spot for entry. So there's lots of little ways to trade around this with the overall decision tree. So I hope that that makes uh, sense. Um, I've got lots of questions and I have time for just a few. Um, here's a great one. How do I work on my own trading? Do I review my trades or models? I do update some of my models that we developed from the fund just to see how markets changed. For example, let me give you a great example. 30 years ago, actually longer than that, 35 years, about 34 years ago, I used to do a breakout from the first hour's range in the S&Ps on the days where we had an NR7. And that worked very well. Um, about 34% of the first hour's range happened, 34% uh, of the day happened in the first hour. So each 10 years, I update that. And then about 10 years ago, we could see that 64% of the day's range was happening in the first hour. The urgency in the marketplace had increased. If you were waiting for a breakout of the first hour range, it was just not much left on the table. So we update these types of statistics. And you can say, what happens if you do the breakout of the first five minute range? How often will it whip back and forth and you know, whipsaw you? You know, that very basic type of modeling, which may or may not um, lend itself to a 100% mechanical system. Most of this type of modeling does not lend itself to a mechanical system, but it still might be a value. What is the comparison of our US range to the overall Globex range? Because darn it, sometimes it feels like we come in and why am I living in the US? All the action happens overnight, you know, that's just not right. But then when we model these things, we find that Ah, you know, the U.S. session still has the greater range than the overnight range, even though sometimes it doesn't seem like it. 
So it's a way of also keeping our cognitive biases in check. Um, let's see here. I also have to constantly bring my own focus back because these markets are so much fun, you know, to always play with, with new things and, and uh, oh my goodness, you know, we, we, uh, I have like two friends on Skype and we're always coming up with really goofy little things. Uh, I'll just show you here. Uh, my little blue dots. This is, this is a rock dot. We call them rock dots, little rock dots for little scalps and, and they're simply uh, stuff that's analogous to bull flags or bear flags. You see here, a little rock dot on the bond. So you can see these things a million different ways. A little bit of, of you know, five minute uh, bull flag here. Here's a little, a little bear flag that happened in crude. They're, they're a lot of fun. Um, and then these little things here indicate a divergence, some type of buyer sell divergence, which is not of value at certain times of the day. So it's sort of the paint by colors. And the problem with this type of stuff is that you also become too myopic and scalping and you're really missing the main idea, which is the main idea in gold was it's a buy day. Try and stay with the trend for the day. I, I like to exit positions around Europe close. You know, that's not a bad time to take uh, money off the table. Um, see, look, our, our Canada is just popping up again. So if you try and go in and out too many times of these things, then you sort of miss getting the main idea right was that I should just buy Canada this morning and stay long all day and it's gonna close back up above that five SMA. So there's always a balance. And sometimes if we're a little off kilter, or we had delayed flights and canceled flights and we didn't get enough sleep or, you know, you guys know the story, right? Divorce, death, taxes, hangovers. Just, you know, there's like a million things that uh, can interfere with our <sighs> calmness, right? And then it's easier to disturb. So I hope I gave you a little bit of insight, get the main idea right, you know how to read the trade sheet, but more importantly, start thinking about your own process, your own homework, your own record keeping. I don't review my trades. I don't review my good trades. I don't review my bad trades. And the reason is it just takes that much more time for me. I know what I'm doing wrong when I'm screwing up and I know why. So I don't really need to do that, but I still need to spend the time doing my preparation. Preparation is absolutely everything for me. We're like I said, I, I, I'm doing this. Um, if this was not meant to be a promo for this, cause this was totally spontaneous. But if you go to my website and you see a tab at the top called workshop, that's going to be two week intensive training. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our preparation at night. We're going to look at all the charts at night. We're going to say, here's a three bar breakout. Here are the levels that we want the next day. Here's how we can trade the S and P's. This is our game plan. And all that work is done before you come in in the morning. And then hopefully you've got a good night's sleep. You're well rested and, um, and then we see how things unfold and it's not, I, I know it's not always so easy. Let me see if I can find my page. I've got a page where I can look at the, uh, the gaps, how, how we gap relative to the uh, previous session here. I'm just trying to find this for you real quickly. I might not be able to on the fly. Uh, 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 there we go. So this is one page too, and you can see this is where gold opened at 7 a.m. And this is where we closed yesterday afternoon. So even if you feel like you came in in the morning and it's like, gosh darn it, gold's up, I forgot to, you know, I really wanted to buy that. 
when you learn to frame things out in terms of the previous day's close, where we opened, how it trades off the opening price. So here, we gapped up. How did we trade off that opening price? Well, we didn't really slow down much. We formed this initial balance, if you want to call it that, or this initial consolidation. And then we rallied up. And where's our magnet? The previous day's high. So same thing with the bonds over here was kind of interesting because the bonds opened right around yesterday's close. And I just used the 7 a.m. Central Time reading. You could really pick anything. It doesn't matter. These little orange dots here are where we opened. So we opened right around yesterday's close and immediately shot up. Now, there's, we tested the high. Okay, I always love these highs and lows. This is Taylor. It doesn't matter if you didn't buy that opening because the trend has been up off of that 7 a.m. with impulse and there still was a flag type of formation. You cannot trade every market, but hopefully the markets that you do pick, even if it's just one or two, it's really a game of not making those unforced errors. You see, you just need one market to trade and quit making errors. And a lot of times our errors come with, I have them too, our cognitive biases, right? I mean, I'm human. I like buying gold a whole lot better than selling gold. I'm human, you know? So it's our cognitive biases, but at least the sheet will keep it in check. And um, again, uh, Hopefully, I can do something like this uh, in the future, just little bits and pieces for you. Um, you know, I'm not running my fund anymore. I basically deregistered. I was a CTA for many years, a CPO for many years. Uh, it makes it kind of fun for me to share because I feel like I know better than a lot of other people out there. So, <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of an ego motivation there, I will admit. Um, and I see. Uh, it, it, it is a challenge, you know, it's a challenge because it takes so long, you know, it takes so long to see all the different types of conditions, just like playing tennis, a professional tennis player, playing on clay, playing on grass, playing on asphalt, playing indoors, playing when it's windy, playing in the other side of the world. And that's part of what these markets are about. Um, just experiencing all the different conditions. So uh, I hope that helps. I'll continue to post the trade sheet. I used to post uh, the charts on the website too. It's, it's not a paying service. I'm not charging for that, but it ends up taking me just too much time to upload each chart one by one and post them on there. If it, if it was a paying service, then I could probably hire somebody else to do it all for me. Uh, right now, my assistant Kyle's pretty much maxed out with our our trading, and I don't want to be doing uh, services and and all that kind of stuff. But but with that said, I am doing this wonderful two week thing with Mandy. You can you can look up her name on the internet. She is an amazing person who's sort of become my best friend online on the opposite side of the world. I haven't seen her for a year full of energy. She's, she's close to my age, um, from Germany originally. Her advanced degrees in psychology and goodness knows what, and multiple coaching courses. And I just love her down to earth, very practical way of working with people. And then another person that's going to be with us, Petar, okay, P-E-T-A-R. I want to call him Peter, but it's really Petar because he's over in Serbia. And I have to say, I've learned from this fellow, just seeing the way that he visualizes um, the volume and the profiles and the distributions and uh, just an amazing eye and talent. And it just goes to show that none of us are too old to ever learn to look at things new ways. I'll always do exactly what I do, but sometimes I can learn to uh, see things in different ways and open my ways. And just two more parting shots for you. Yes.
I too have my gunner glasses that uh, I mentioned in the book. And I too have my Koha Umpatu sign, fuck a duck, from the book. And lastly, as a parting shot, there is Raffles up above my door, who I brought back from Singapore, who also made it in my book. I'm going to say signing off to you guys. Maybe this, this was fun. We'll do it again. Uh, I figured yesterday was like a crazy busy day. So today uh, uh, we might be able to grab a little bit and these S&Ps are coming back to Unchanged and I'm going to go. And I think this was being recorded. So uh, I will find out to my assistant about making that available for you if you wish to hear it again. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Hope I see you in the future.